Broadcasting live from the only establishment in town that can't kick him out. His own basement. The world according to Rocket. Lord have mercy, I am back. It is I, Rocket Man. Thank you for being here. Took a couple of months off. I'll tell you why a little bit later in the video. Tell you what I've been doing. <laughs> and welcome back. 2024 season. We're here. We're excited. Hypo sounds great. Uh, the team looks great. And uh, here's what we're going to do for the spring. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. Heupel said something yesterday that impressed me. He said, you know, there are 15 practices. Day one through five, he said, people are terrible. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> you know, the new kids don't know what they're doing. The vets have rust on them. So the first five days, <clears throat> not so much. Second five days, they're completely different people. There is a dramatic change from week one to week two. And then the third five days, he said they're not even close to the same person they were on day one. They've improved so much. So I got an idea. Here's what I'm going to do. You know, they, they have a press conference every after every practice, <clears throat> and people throw it up. And I used to do this as well. <clears throat> Sorry, scratchy throat. Uh, just throw up the press conference, and it sounds like crap. You can't hear the questions or whatever. And I decided that here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do day one. And I'm going to do day six. I'm going to do day 15. And then the orange and white game. That's how I'm going to approach this season here during the spring training. Now, what I'm going to do differently than I have in the past is that I'm going to have some production value. I'm going to make sure that you hear all the questions. That drives me crazy when you can't hear the questions. I'm going to make sure the audio is spectacular. I'm going to add some production value. And you'll see. You'll enjoy this today. It's, it's, it's a good thing. And then, of course, when I feel the need, I'll add my commentary and analysis. All right? So, welcome to day one. Thank you for being here. Like and subscribe, as always. And... More than as always, I love your comments. Let me know what you think about the season, who's impressing you, what have you heard, what's going on. Let's get to it. Roll it. Day one on, on the practice field. Um, great to get out there. Got a bunch of new guys. Uh, I think we got, you know, eight transfers, 14 uh, mid year uh, high school guys. Um, uh, Caleb Beasley, Edwin Spillman joined us here uh, today. They weren't with us at the beginning of, uh, of this semester, but were able to join us today, too. So, Great, great to uh, to get out on the grass with uh, with those guys and and um, you know start our on on the field journey uh, for this season and um, you know our guys have done a great job in, in the first quarter of our off season transition here into into spring ball in a great spot um, to to go compete and, and get better every single day and and um, you know today was the start of that. Coach, what do you think you know about this team today that you didn't know when you left? Bowl? That's a different team than it was at the bull site. Uh, there's a lot of guys that are here with us, obviously. Um, you know, December's a different month. Guys are on the league, whatever it might be. Uh, you have some of your mid-year enrollees that are there, but it's their first experience. Got a bunch more that are with us now than, than we're in uh, Orlando with us. And um, yeah, every year it's always been true, um, but certainly, you know, rosters, you yeah, know, turnover you know, more frequently uh, at this point and this time in, in college football. And so only uh, it's a, it's a, it's a process. It's a journey. You can't short change it. You can't, can't cut it. And, and, um, you know, for us, you know, strength and conditioning, the accountability factor, you know, we're intentional in trying to develop leadership communication from within the locker room. Our guys handled that extremely well, grow, grew throughout of it. Some great days, some, some tough days that we had to learn from too. Um, but that's all part of the, the process and the journey. What I do like about this group is that they do compete extremely hard. They care about one another, um, and they're willing to get coached. And, and uh, today is just the beginning of the on-field stuff for everybody in the building, man, fundamentally getting better, growing in your technique, mastering that, then the scheme, your eyes, your hands. Um, it's, a, it's a long ways to go until we kick off. Um, you know, we always challenge our guys, don't make the same mistake twice. If you do that, um, you're going to grow and, and be in a good spot by the time we get to kickoff. Um, you know, the identity of this football team, you know, our makeup, we're still a long ways away from, from being 
what I hope us to be, but also uh, what we should be. Um, that's all part of it. Josh, when you're talking about the transfers, obviously they were brought here for a reason. They're all going to, you would hope, fill critical roles. Can they afford to sort of ease into it because this is still just spring or do you need to see some urgency from those transfers that they can they can be ready when this these 15 practices are made? I don't see urgency from everybody that's uh, putting a helmet on and go, going out and practice. Um, I don't care how long you've been playing, the best in the game are always working on their craft. And that's, uh, you know, Hall of Fame race, 15-year bets. Same at, at this level, man. There's constant growth. And, and um, all of our guys got areas that, you know, our strength staff's pinpointed, our coaches have pinpointed in, in areas that they got to get better at. And so continuing to compete every single day. Um, guys that compete the hardest and do it the longest, typically the ones that went out. And that's true in a position battle. It's true you can get out on the field on Saturday afternoon to communication and the helmets and stuff. How much will you all work that this spring? And what will you need to see out of that before you feel comfortable <laughs> and you can roll out there in a game with that? Really have an idea, but got to kind of tinker with it both sides of the football um, don't have as many available right now and I think that's true across college football is, is what you'd like to be able to to work it on both sides of the football every single day every rep uh, with all the guys that potentially would be wearing it but a little bit trial and error and uh, that'll happen in practice and in scrimmages and and uh, you know kind of figure out how to navigate it uh, where it's most advantageous to, to our program that it can be. You guys have had good relationship between your starting quarterback and your backup quarterback for for several years now. What did you see from Jake Merklinger in the bowl practices, and then in this first quarter of prep going into spring practice? Yeah, um, talented guy that uh, works extremely hard, cares about his craft, cares about his teammates in, in a really positive way, and um, he's had you know a workman type mentality since he got here. And you get thrown into bowl preparation, man, it's all coming really quickly at you and certainly at that position with everything that uh, that you've got to navigate continuing to get better fundamentally he's grown and understanding our schemes he hasn't mastered anything yet but he shouldn't at this point either um i'm really excited to get out there you know and, and continue to compete with him throughout the, the course of, of spring ball <clears throat> at quarterback and it's true at every position too but the fundamentals of the position if those aren't right it's hard to be consistent in you know what everybody's going to see you know the accuracy of a football when you're throwing it, um, but continuing to grow that way and then, you know, mastering our schemes here and, and what he's seen on the defense side of the ball. So for all of you, the young guys that are in spring ball, man, it's almost like thirds, man. The first five days are really tough. It's hard. Second five days is a, usually a dramatic growth from the first five days. And by the time you get to the end of it, you don't resemble the player that you were the first five days. So, you know, and and uh, being confident, continuing to work hard, not losing any confidence as you're learning as you're going through uh, making some mistakes too. You guys have uh, had mostly internal promotions and uh, you've had a little bit, little bit of turnover on the staff the last couple of years. What's it like, you know, bringing in a couple outside guys and how's that transition been for them so far? Yeah, for us, you know, the process really isn't um, different. Um, you know, when we have an opening, um, you always want to hire the right person. Uh, just the culture of the building uh, is going to be able to, you know, develop them and have great relationships with the players um, that's going to be a great teacher of a game but help them grow outside of it too on um, all of that translates into recruiting because you know to me recruiting is about relationships and um, you know showing a kid how you going to care about them how you're going to help them grow and, and become their best and um, you know for us uh, really excited about the two guys that we brought in um, you know, William and, and Darrell are, are two guys who have had a ton of success uh, if you look at the history of, of their their careers um, they've coached at high levels. They've had guys that have been highly productive. Um, they've come in the building, done a great job of, of, you know, developing relationships with our guys inside the room really quickly, but then also, you know, being able to demonstrate how they're going to help them grow and, and uh, the transition's been really smooth. So excited to have those guys, and I know our players uh, have really enjoyed having them too. Josh, just sort of following up on that one, what are the habits or maybe personalities that you've seen from Coach Eng and, and Coach Sims in the – position rooms out there on the field today just habits and personalities from those guys yeah um they're both extremely smart um whether i've known them or just went through the interview process with them um they're both extremely bright guys um they communicate on a really high level um they have a high passion care factor they got great energy um they're really comfortable and confident in who they are and, and how they present themselves and 
Um, yeah, they've been really good inside the building so far. Really high level guys that, um, you know, do it the right way and extremely competitive. Growing up, being able to watch them on Saturdays, and in my opinion, it was RBU. I mean, you turn around and you watch Jamal Lewis when I was growing up, Travis Henry when I was growing up, Travis Stevens when I was growing up, seeing them run through that power to you to come in here, and they were beating up on everybody. Um, and it was one of those deals that you had admiration for the program. It was one of those deals I wanted to be able to come here and play, but I wasn't good enough to play here. Um, I had a teammate in high school that played here, so I always had very, very fond memories of watching Tennessee on television. Just kind of what's kind of been your first impressions of this room? I know it's been a couple weeks, but this running back room, what's kind of impressed you about those guys so far? Hard working. Um, they come to work every single day and they push one another. Really good young men in the room with good character, um, and their personalities are really good. They gel together, um, and it's a brotherhood in that room. Good morning, everyone. I'm Coach William Inge. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to, to have an opportunity to be here at the University of Tennessee. Uh, it's some exciting times, I think, as we all know, and, and I'm really excited to be a part of this thing that we have going on right now, and it is awesome to be able to be around the players. And you talk about being able to drink from a fire hose this last week. It has been awesome, and I've loved every moment of it. And at this time, we'd like to open it up. What's the last few months been like for you, for you personally? I know you just mentioned it there, you know, coming in and get, hitting the ground running, but going from a college football playoff to, to a transition here, what's what's that been like? Uh, it, it has been like life in hyperspeed, you know, to where you you have a chance to compete for the national championship, and then you're getting ready to, in a sense, rebuild and get everything squared away there. And then there's change, and then there's more change. And then literally in the last hour, there's then there's Tennessee. So it, it literally, and then all of a sudden, a week ago, I'm here. So it, it, it has been a, a whirlwind, but, but that's kind of the nature of the beast that we're in right now. And we're excited, and we always take advantage of every moment that we have. Okay, uh, okay, stop, 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 just a second. <laughs> what the hell? This William Inge dude is the linebacker coach. He teaches the skull crushers how to crush skulls, for crying out loud. And he comes out like, hello, my name is William Inge, and we're here. Uh, welcome to MIT, and I'm going to give you a lecture today on nuclear biology. <laughs> what? I love this guy. Here I was expecting, you know, most linebacker coaches, hey, we're going to kick their ass and then we're going to pull their eyeballs out and reach down their gullet and pull out their lung and eat it for lunch. <laughs> Not this guy. This guy's like giving a TED talk. I love William Inge. Now, let me give you context for William Inge. William Inge was at Washington, who just played for the national championship. Right? Their coach, that DeBoer fellow, is the guy who went to Alabama to place to replace Nick Saban. Now it's interesting that he didn't take William Inge. I don't know that he didn't take him, or William Inge said, you know what? I don't want to go to Alabama. I want to go to Tennessee. But whatever happened. And if you know, please let me know. If you know the full story, let me know in the, in, in the comments. But this guy is a heavyweight guy. He is awesome. And I am so thankful that we have a guy like him in that second line of defense of the linebackers. I mean, holy crackers. I love me some William Inge. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Rocky Top. Well, Chris Brazel, and how have the older guys, uh, Squirrel Light, uh, Brew McCoy, helped him in his transition here? Uh, you know, I've been really fortunate on um, building a culture where, you know, your vets want good players around them and want to help them grow. And that happens because of the, you know, position coaches that we have inside of those rooms, the culture that they set inside of those rooms. It happens because of the locker room. Um, and, uh, you know, so for Chris, all the veteran guys that have been in this, one, <coughs> excuse me, they help them grow just in how how to play the game within the game. You know, for us, the mechanics, how to process can be specific routes, um, but they also help them just, you know, the culture of the building, you know, and who we need to be individually, thus collectively as a group. And, and uh, 
you know, our first quarter of our off season, I said it earlier, we spent a lot of time on leadership and communication and, um, got good leadership. It's got to become great leadership and, uh, we need it to be championship leadership inside of that locker. Josh, you're already seeing some places, some, some analysts saying that Pierce is going to have to maybe get used to the, the way people might, you know, sort of focus on him this season, do what they can against him. But as last season <coughs> progressed, how much more attention did he start getting in that way with opponents? He, he did see a bunch of uh, the types of, like, can be sliding, he can be chipping, um, he, you know, some of the route structure, getting the ball out quickly out on the perimeter on, you know, was part of it. And, and uh, at the end of the day, any unit it can't just be one guy. You know, James needs to grow as a player too, and he would stand up here and tell you that as well. There's things that he's working on for him to become his best and take his game to another level. Um, but you got to have guys around you too, um, and uh, that way, if you know they're just trying to slide to one man, somebody else has got a one on one that they can do a win too, and and uh, bring some balance to what you're doing up front. And, and uh, you know that for us, obviously having uh, the ability to move him around too will be uh, a part of it as well. Josh, so with Lance Hurd, the transfer you guys brought in on the offense line, he, he obviously is very, very big. And, and uh, he is so big, he's, yes. Yes, he is. yes thank, yeah. yeah. Thanks for confirming that. Uh, just the, the fact that he's sort of a young player, but kind of is coming in with uh, have some expectations, coming in from LSU, what you guys expect from him. How, what's the spring like for him as he sort of adjusts this offense and, and, and really building his spirit? Yeah, uh, really young player um, that played. Um, you know, snaps down there and played well when he had the opportunity. Um, you know, he's a young player that's going to have to continue to grow. He's got to develop and grow into being a pro and how he handles himself every single day. He's been awesome inside of our building, you know, developing relationships, how he's competed every day. Um, the guys that we took from the transfer portal, um, that recruitment happens really quickly. Man, I, it's been a great group that's come into the building and tried to blend in and mess in with uh, with our team culture extremely quickly. They've handled themselves with a lot of maturity. Um, he's handled himself with maturity on the field as a young player that, you know, he's, I don't know, seven months, eight months into his college football career, and he's just beginning to join him. So fundamentals, technique, understanding what we're doing offensively, the communication that's got to happen up front. Um, you know, I mean, when we play with tempo, being able to function and operate within that is in the beginning stages. Um, uber talented, been great in the building. Man, I expect him to, to grow a bunch here over, you know, the next 14 practices. You always talk about being able to take your offense and, and mold it to whatever quarterback you have or whatever weapons that you have. <clears throat> with, with it now being Nico's offense, where are you guys this spring in terms of building around him, experimenting with what's best for him versus what you've done in the past. Yeah. And then secondly, where is he from a leadership standpoint in your mind? Right yeah. Um, you know, knowing who Nico is, but also knowing that he's still growing as a player, you know, some core principles, some things that we believe in that we feel like we need to have. We'll continue to grow in that. Some subtle things that we'll add, you know, just based off of a player that he is and, and how we put him in a position um, to be successful, but also help us grow and, and change from year to year too. And and uh, so we'll tinker with some of that th through uh, through spring ball. You know, figure out you know the things that we feel like are best for us collectively and for him. And um, you know, kind of hone in on those things as we get into uh, to training camp. On the leadership side of it, is you're still pushing extremely hard on the fundamentals, the the growth and mastering of our offense mastering what's going on on the other side of the ball. Um, he does a phenomenal job in one-on-one -on -one situations. Communication with wide receivers after, you know, a series, offensive line, um, the growth, his voice within our entire program, he's got to continue to grow uh, in that role. And that's something that is true for every young quarterback, though. Um, you know, we'll expect him to, to continue to, uh, to mold into that. I just want to say something about Nico. I want you to look at the shoulders and arms that Nico has hanging from his body now. <laughs> now, I don't know if you paid attention to him when he got here a year and a half ago. <laughs> Holy crackers. I mean, look at the delts on this guy in front, side, rear, and the arms. This guy's getting stout. He has put in some time in the weight room, and 
and those nutritionists have put some weight on him. I don't know exactly how much he, weight he's put on, but I'm going to guess he's at least 220 now. But look at those shoulders and arms. I, I am so excited, and I believe, and I'd like to know if you agree with me or not, I think that we have the best tackle football quarterback in America on our team. And I'm going to pray every day of the year for his safety and injury-free appearances in our games on Saturday. I love me some Nico. I love this team. A few people have asked me, Rocket Man, where you been for two months? I needed to distress. I got a, uh, another little business that I'm working very hard on. And I just needed to get away from making videos. It takes a lot of time to make videos. A lot of time to make them well. I needed to de-stress. How did I de-stress? Teufelsrad. <laughs> of course. I mean, look at this. This is the greatest thing since drag racing on a Saturday night at 2 o'clock in the morning when you were in high school. Teufelsrad. It means the devil's wheel. Now, everybody... <laughs> Everybody has, everybody has a bucket list. I have now added Teufelsrad onto my bucket list and elevated it to the top of the list. At some point, I am going to go to Munich for Oktoberfest, put on some Lederhosen, just so that I can participate and watch Teufelsrad. Okay, here's the broadcast schedule <clears throat> this spring. Day one, <clears throat> this is the day one. I'll also do a video on day six. I'll do a video on day 11, <clears throat> day 15, and then we'll recap the orange and white game. In addition, you lucky devils, I'm going to do a, a live once a week, either Wednesday or Thursday, probably Thursday, <clears throat> just so I can commiserate with my favorite reprobates, you guys. As always, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Give me your comments. And I will see you in the next video. Go Big Orange. <laughs>